delicious. Welcome back to Simple Sin Podcast, where we talk about seven things and things and stuff that are important to all, important to everybody. It is uh, just factuals at this point. It's true. You don't question it. Don't Google it. Don't look it up on the internet. Just take our word for it. Scientists passed us a little note along in our email, and we're like, hey, here you go. This is, this is facts. And I was like, okay, awesome. Number one podcast of seven things. Welcome back to another week, another episode. We appreciate you being here. Before we get into it, I have to shout out. We talk about this. I am sponsored with G Fuel. Obviously, I have an abundance right beside me, and it keeps coming in. The missus is potentially going to start throwing G Fuel at me, but you, you know, she drinks it too, so it's okay. I got the sickest cup and collector's box from them. It's Attack on Titan stuff. This cup is fire. It is so sick. <laughs> Stainless steel. It's so dope. Uh, and the flavor is citrus green tea, and it's delicious. So I'm drinking on that today. That's what I'm sipping on. Because you know what? I need energy to to discuss all these important things. But without further ado, we're going to get off of me, phrasing, and we're going to bring in and welcome back our esteemed co-host, the one, the only, Mr. Christian. <laughs> you thank you so much it feels good to be back for another week um i literally was just looking just a second ago while you were talking at my browser history to see because i wanted to refresh myself on something that i looked up uh but the last thing that i looked up with any in my computer was the garth brooks thing that you talked about oh my last, god <laughs> last podcast episode and then like now my my, my computer is just Pulling up tweets about that, and it's hilarious. Dude, that it. <laughs> I mean, it's I so should have I should have <laughs> thought about it and dove into it more this week, but man, yeah. it has been a week. I will say this: anyone that works, well, I mean, most jobs probably nowadays somewhat go well. Maybe maybe not most jobs. A lot of jobs nowadays revolve around the internet, correct? Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of remote jobs. With what I do in content creation, I am on the internet a lot, and sadly, this week, my internet has been an absolute dumpster fire. It has been awful. It just, let's see, like, one day I tried to go live, I was live for like an hour or something, um, mm-hmm. and the power went out when the internet was acting right, and since then, it's been awful. It's, like, just been terrible. Like, I don't know what's going on, so hopefully the podcast will go well, but it has been a very frustrating week for me, um, so I didn't really get to look up a lot, but... I have watched some stuff over the week, and we're going to talk about it. Sadly, I have no Garth Brooks stuff to to contribute to the conversation. I wish I did, though. I, I would love to actually kind of dive into it a little bit. I don't know why. Like, part of it is just hilarious. The other part is, if there ever was any truth to it, dude, that would be absolutely fascinating to me. I would love to, like, read the, or hear, like, the case study and stuff on that. Like, that would just yeah be easily the most notorious serial killer of all time. Like, it right or prolific I mean, probably prolific not notorious prolific probably if you go off of what they're saying in the tweets anyway then yeah but Dude, it, it's hilarious what what are they saying the body count is is anybody saying anything like when is this starting um, from like when he started touring okay. which is hold on when did garth brooks start touring 90s garth brooks now i don't even know is it from then because it good god dude if that's the he's 61 where is how long has he been doing this? Uh years active. Nineteen eighty five? Shit. Nine okay, years active, nineteen eighty five. I like how it's years active almost like a serial killer or something. Years active, nineteen eighty five to two thousand one. Then he took a Dexter break. Come back in two thousand five to the present. Damn. So he took four years off. So essentially Say 1989 till now, if you just take four years out of there, which that's not right, but take four years off of it. This dude has been going that long, but he hadn't been touring that long, though. But those old school country tours, those would be like months and months at a time, would they not? Like you're on tour for a long time? I mean, it's... Yeah, it would be broken up like that, but it's just ridiculous how how we even got here to begin with. I mean, but it is an interesting topic, though. You can't lie. Also, his name is Troyal? T-Royal? Troyal? Troyal Garth Brooks? How the hell do you say that? 
How do you spell it? T. It's T. Royal. Like capital T and then Royal. Troil? 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 Like, I don't. I feel like I'm stroking out trying to say his damn name. It sounds like you're stroking out trying to say Born it. in Tulsa, Oklahoma. There's no shot. 91 and 90. Okay. 89 through 90, breakthrough success. So he started in 85. He broke through in 89, 90. So say he probably did start touring 89, 90. Like, really, really touring. How would. Damn. You would have to have his. There's no way he could do it solo if he was a serial killer. There's zero chance. There's too many people. Hear me out. There's too many people when you are that big of an artist. Because think about the bands that we play with. They would still sometimes have like a tour manager or they would have like a merch person. Like there would be not a crew. Somebody, like crew is what I'm trying to say. To be a huge country artist. He's got, like, probably a PR person, a tour manager. Like, he has people, a bus driver. Like, there's all kinds of people all over. So, they, he would have yeah. to have somebody, because I'm assuming he's not alone very long with anybody. Right. They're just, they're just, there doesn't seem like there'd be uh, enough time for that kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Just in general. Because he, he has to be getting... What like, if it's on his rider? At this point. I want three cases of water, a couple cases of beer, a couple handles of whiskey, and a body disposal service. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the That's hell? That's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Like, what? Dude, oh my God. That's funny. Okay, we have, a, we have homework for this week. Right. You brought this up. This is your fault already. Your fault. You're welcome. Our homework for this week is we have to find the documentation of his tour dates lining up with missing people. Because <laughs> I want to know how many they're trying to like put with him. That's that's funny. I so like going going down that rabbit hole is ridiculous because there's so much going on with that in general to begin with, and the shit that people are saying is just getting more and more outlandish as time goes. So it's hard. It's getting harder and harder to kind of keep up with that thing. With that kind of thing. Um, but with that said, Sin, I'm curious as to uh, what you've been. Oh, see, now I'm down the rabbit hole. Now I'm literally Googling see, stuff. You're in there now. You're Googling it. See, that's what's happening. That's what's happening. Oh, my God. Wait, what is this? This is on Tik. What is this? Hold on. I have to mute this because I don't want it coming through the podcast. Bro, there is no shot. This is real. Who is this? I need to take it? a picture of this. I want to watch this off off podcast. This dude. How do I share that? Like, I gotta find this and share this with you. <laughs> Send a friend. Hold on. Okay. I'm sending it to you right now. So I have it later too. You just you should just pull up the map. Look at the background of the map. Just pause the video and look at the map. That's missing and unidentified persons with, I guess, his tour dates. It's on your TikTok. Oh my god. I'm wa- just waiting patiently for Christian to just die laughing. What the hell is what? that? What? <laughs> Dude, what is that? That's the entire... There's no shot. Like, I need to watch this video now. Get out of here. Yeah, I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to deep dive into that. Yeah, um, okay. Next week, we're going to do our best to, to do a little research. So we're not just, like, laughing at it. I just want to see if there's anything that potentially holds water or we're, like... I mean, I can see that kind of thing, but dude, this is, it's crazy. It's crazy out there. All right. We're going to get off that. We don't have anything to, to really debate on it. Christian just wanted to steer us off track right away, but what we're going to do, um, actually first and foremost, before we get in what we've been watching and reading, can I, can I complain? Are you ready for me to complain about something? I'm curious if you're going to complain. So it's no secret. Christian's a huge screen fan. Huge Scream fan. Uh, I almost said favorite horror franchise. Definitely, definitely one of them. Absolutely. I would say, yeah, one, I would like, say it's I, in I your think, top three, probably think, top two, but I, yeah. I don't know if you, you yeah. put it above Halloween or not. Here's the thing. I think the franchise is 
in my personal opinion, I think that that particular franchise is like the best, the easiest one to just watch all the way through because um, it has way less stinkers in it than other franchises. But my favorite one is still Halloween because, you know, when Michael is done right, he's done right. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely number two uh, for, for, for all time. And it's one of my favorites of all time. So yeah, absolutely. You're correct. Halloween, you say? Halloween. Um, anyways, what I was going to say, so this week we had some news come out and pretty much, um, the people that did five and six, right. Mm -hmm. Which are, um, something radio. I'm drawing a blank. Radio silence. Radio silence. Thank you. I don't know why I was struggling with that. They are not doing seven and they have announced, I'm guessing it's officially announced and everything's like done but it's the uh the director of happy death day will be doing scream seven so please mm -hmm. excuse me while i go stick my head in the door and slam it repeatedly because i personally don't really care for happy death day or happy death day too i just I, I don't know i didn't like it i didn't it was eh. like it just didn't get me it was blah the whole way Maybe it was just writing, so maybe he'll do good with Scream, but I'm worried he's going to bring that kind of whatever to it, and it's just not going to be a good movie. So for me, first off, got to start by saying Radio Silence. I knew that Radio Silence wasn't going to be involved in this one just because of the way they were talking uh, following the release of, of Scream 5, right? Or excuse me, Scream 6. I kept saying, like, oh, man, we can't wait to see what's going to happen next, even if we're not involved. Like, we're just so excited for the franchise, like, blah, blah, blah. They're saying stuff like that out the gates. So I remember talking about it on the pod uh, a couple of months ago at this point. Like, for sure, um, once, the, once Scream 6 came out, I remember talking about I was thinking that they weren't going to direct the next movie, how it wasn't going to be them and how it might not even happen, blah, blah, blah. Um, and and here, here we are. And that's the case. It's a big problem for me because I think that they brought a lot of really good things to Scream 5 and 6 or, you know, 5 Cream and, and Scream 6. The problems that I'm having that I had with them when they directed with Scream uh, 5, I'm just going to call it Scream 5 because what the fuck it is. Or Scream 5. Some of the issues I had was I didn't really like Sam's character too much. I think that her her I think that her performance was a little bland and that reflected the writing that she was given. Tara, her sister, Jenna Ortega's character, was given a little bit more to do. Um, and she was given her her the her delivery came across a little bit more genuine in the film. So I like that a little bit more. Um I'm not like a huge like Jenna Ortega like dick writer or anything. Like I think that she does good for what she does. But I don't think she's like the best thing since sliced bread. I think she's just new and, and we get to see her doing these things. But with that said, it did a lot of things in Scream 5 that I really liked. There were some things I didn't like, R.I.P. Dewey, but I mean, it makes sense. And in Scream 6, I remember we talked about it. One of my biggest issues with that film was that nobody died. You know, they didn't really have anybody on the main cast bite it. So that was a big no no for me. Um, but aside from that, it's still enjoyed the movie and I want to see what's going to happen next. Now, with them not directing and us getting a new director, the biggest thing that I have to worry about is how's the feeling of the movie going to be? Is it going to be too funny? Is it going to be too silly? I think is it, it will be. Too... I think it's going to be Yeah, it's going to be much too comedy. outlandish. Yeah, like, where, where are they going to go from here? Are they going to uh, open up some loose plot threads? Are they going to tie those up? Are we going to get to meet uh, the Carpenter sister's mom? Are we going to see Gail die in this movie? Are we going to see Sydney come back? Are we going to see uh, you know, her family, all these things, like ghost face, is there going to be more than one? Is there going to be a family again? Is there going to be a cult? Are we going to see Stu come back? Like people want to see that, like all of those things, like, are we going to be able to do those things? Are we going to be able to have a cohesive film? Is it going to wrap up this like new trilogy um, for, for films? Is it going to feel like scream? Is it going to feel good? Is it going to feel scary? Like all of these things. So I mean, obviously I have worries with this director. I do like the director though. Uh, I can't remember his name right now. It's Land something Landon. Uh, if you look that up and see it, let me know. But I can't remember the director of Happy Death Day's name right now. I do like him as a person. I do like him as a director. Um, I think that he could do good work with this franchise. It's just that it seems like coming on Christopher Landon on the end. 
Yes, thank you, Christopher Landon. I think that having him come in at the end of this is a little weird only because he has to take all of those plot threads they left open and tie them up in a way that makes it make sense and that feels like the other movies. He also has to take some scenes, make them scary again. Uh oh. We might have lost. Oh, oh, there he's back. He. Heck yeah. And, and bring those back in in a way that, that feels cohesive. Um, but I, here's the thing. At the end of the day, I'm excited that we're getting another one. I'm excited that they're going to finish it out. And I'm excited that the new director is somebody that. Are they finishing it out, though? Like his films. Uh, for the, from all things considered, they, they have to. Like, they're, they're going to figure this shit out right after the writer's strike and get something going because Jenna Ortega's schedule is just going to keep rising. She's going to keep getting busier and busier because she's so hot right now. So they need to lock her down in a way that makes sense, but they also need the script to be tight. So I think that if they get a tight script, then they can do anything because Ghostface is going to be Ghostface because they can have the same stuff performer be the character, right? They just need to wrap this story up. It needs to be tight. They need to put a little fucking bow on it and they need to make it make sense for these characters' journeys, and they need to kill some people. They need to kill a lot of people. That's what we need to see. We got to chase this one, on the last one, excuse me, that we missed out on on the on the on Scream Five. So we got that. We got some blood. We did get a brutal killer too, but we need to put all that in. We need some characters to get got. We need a mystery that makes sense. We need to really be like, oh my god, it was this person. Like, if we can get all those things in this film, then it's going to be great. And I have all the faith that. Christopher Landon can make it happen. I think that, like I said, is the main director, is responsible for a lot of things, but if that script is weak, the movie will fail. And as long as we don't get another retread of like Scream 3, I think we'll be fine. And I don't even hate Scream 3. It's just like universally like people's least favorite. Um, But watching it all these years, I actually appreciate the movie a lot more. I don't like the voice changer thing. And Roman Bridger really gets my fucking nerves. But aside from that, I do like the movie a lot. So... I'm just hoping we get a tight ass script and they really let Christopher Landon do his thing, but it's not too funny. As long as it's not too funny, I think we'll that's be that's. I feel but, like it's gonna be too funny. That's the vibe I'm getting. But he could prove, he could prove me wrong, and I hope he does. I hope I have to eat my words. I'm like, damn, Scream Seven was a banger. Like that was fantastic. I really hope so. But that I don't know. I guess I may be the oddball here. I know on the inside, I know you're listening. I know you liked Happy Death Day. I just didn't. I did too. I, I still haven't seen the second one. I it just. I, I love the first one. I, I, I did. I, I really like liked the first one. It wasn't like groundbreak, break groundbreaking. It wasn't like the newest thing I've ever seen. It wasn't the best thing I've ever seen. But it was good for what it was. We knew what we were getting. The, the the brand of humor was great. The script was actually pretty fucking tight. So I I enjoyed that movie. And then three, I think, is the main character's name. I can't remember. But she had character growth in the movie and like movies where you have that kind of groundhogs day thing that's like the whole point is the character to grow in some some way some shape some form but i liked her uh after she started growing i loved supporting cast uh the, the 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 reasonings for all the happening were actually cool like i said did not see the second one uh wasn't interested um i'll watch it at some point when it's streaming somewhere but i'm not looking for it right now but if Christopher Landon can can tap into that and can, like I said, tight script is what matters. If we can get a tight script and him to just really hone in on what's going on and give us a ghost face that we like again, we're good. I just want to, I just want to like ghost face. I want to like the characters and I want to be fucking sad when they get gutted, bro. Like that's what I'm looking for. So if I can get that in the screen movie with some meta commentary in between, I'm I'm good. That's all I'm asking for. Uh, so we'll see. On He's the inside, for a lot. I feel like. I don't, I don't think that's a lot. And on the inside, I know you're listening. I, I hope that we share the same mindset on that. Uh, everybody listening, I hope we share the similar mindset on that. But, I mean, tight script, uh, good camera shots, angles, lighting. Please don't make it look like Scream 4 did because I, I like Scream 4, but I hate the way it looks. It looks like somebody just rubbed lip gloss over the camera lens and they never changed it. So I, I just never want to see that again. But aside from that, man, just don't make it too funny. Make Ghostface scary like like he should be give us the fucking blade wipe that we need in all the movies and uh bring back uh marco beltrami for the score that's all i want asking a lot christian you're very needy you know that. i, hope, I mean maybe i am all right I, well, I we're like gonna get back on track because like christian will sit here and keep being needy yeah stop being needy what you've been reading watching playing right. what we like do we like talk about what we're watching reading listen to playing this past week um 
I said I had internet issues, but I have been able to. Uh, there's two things I want to talk about. We got into this week, and the yeah. first thing being, um, I recently played. I think I talked about it. I played Twisted Metal, the original. I'm mm-hmm. um, come out on PlayStation. I played it, beat it, and I forgot that there wasn't joysticks on PS One. And bro, driving it first, I was all over the place. Like it was. I was like, how in the hell did I do this as a kid? But after a few minutes, I kind of got the feel for it and kind of, like, muscle memory come back. And for what it was and all this polygon goodness, I still love that game. Like, the nostalgia and stuff. The graphics are awful for nowadays standards. But back then, which, I mean, I think the game came out, like, 95 or something. Yeah. Dude, yeah. it was so good. And uh, I played that and I played Twisted Metal 2. And while doing that, I've also started um, the Twisted Metal series. Which, when I first saw, I was like, oh, God, please save us all. This is going to be trash. Uh, and then I heard it's from the producers of Deadpool and uh, Zombieland, I believe. And so I was like, okay, maybe. Cast isn't bad. Um, so I gave it a shot. Because realistically, back then, like it was a basic premise. Hey, survive all these places, these demolition derby death matches. And you get a wish from Calypso. Like, it's not like there was some very intricate that I remember from the Twisted Metal game story. It was pretty basic premise. You get one like a wish from Calypso, that's it. I think. And then, you know, the next game, whatever. Um mm-hmm. with that being said, taking Christian's line. It is very zombie zombie land Deadpool. Leaning more towards zombie land and like that kind of gory, goofy, dark humor in parts. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, there is some really cheese ball parts, without a doubt. Um, Anthony Mackie is pretty funny. He he's he's likable. He's likable in it. But there is one shining star in the in the show that honestly, every time they're on screen, I'm fascinated by them. And I'm kind of surprised by that a little bit. And it is by far the most... When you say Twisted Metal, it has to be the first character that comes to everybody's mind. And that is the one and the only Sweet Tooth. Um, Sweet yeah, Tooth, is the body, like, the what you see <coughs> on camera is Samoa Joe. For all you wrestling fans out there. Samoa Joe is who is under the mask. But the voice of Sweet Tooth is the one and only Will Arnett. And Sweet Tooth is like when I first saw him I was like okay Sweet Tooth is a psychopath like kind of I don't know just he's a psychopath but then now he's still a psychopath like but you're he's kind of like a lovable psychopath in a weird way because you know he's going to kill some people like he's going to brutally just murder somebody but also you're starting to get a little depth on like backstory on him and stuff and it's kind of cool so Um, so he's a lot like Deadpool then is that what you're telling me um, yeah, I wouldn't even put him in Deadpool's the gray. Deadpool's the same. I don't know that I'd put him in the gray. Like, I don't know that Sweet Tooth is. I guess he's not killing. He's killing a lot of people. It's very few people. Like, if you're his fan, then he'll be like, "Oh, I have fans. Come with me, fans." Like that kind of thing. But if not, he's pretty much gonna murder you. That's fair. Like it's he's interesting. Um, there's there's a lot of cheese ball parts. Uh, it is cool uh, spotting different people that I know from the game, like Pit Viper or uh, Mr. Slam and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, I remember that character, like that name, that character, and stuff like that. Um, I am enjoying that, but it's it's not the best. It's not like something I'm like, oh, this is you know the last of a show or this is House of Dragon. Am I enjoying going through it? Yeah, me and the misses are both watching it, and she loves Sweet Tooth as well. Like Sweet Tooth is kind of stealing the show for us. Anthony Mackie's fun, but he's also kind of goofy at times. And, like, definitely bringing a lot of comedic to it. Um, Neff Campbell's in it, by the way. Nice. That's good. That's, I like that. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, and I think she's kind of a... Uh, well, I don't want to give too much away. Um, but check it out. It's on Peacock. I have a few episodes left. When I finish it, I'll give my full thoughts on it. Honestly, like, when I started, I was like, there's there's not, like, this isn't, like, Halo. Where Halo, I had however many, what, three, four, 
uh, six, six games worth of content at that point or something like that. Like story, mm-hmm. you knew Master Chief, and then they were just like, hey, here you go. Check this out. Oh, we're not wearing a helmet. Oh, you're pissed off? Too bad. We're not wearing a helmet. This is what this is John. I'm like, fuck it is. That's not Chief that I've done went to war with. You know, like it's not that deal. So they're kind of doing their own thing with still having like um like missiles and different little things from the the game that if you played it you remember. So it's not making me mad in that aspect. Um but I will definitely let you all know. I I have like two or three episodes left. Like I'm pretty close. So hopefully by next next one I can give you a full full review of it. Christian maybe you'll have started it by then and we can talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've been watching that. We've watched Twisted Metal. And then the other thing, it has took me a couple weeks to watch this uh, because Baby Sin was just revolting. And finally, he, uh, he he accepted what we were watching and started actually watching some of it at part. And that would be Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. I have finally watched and finished Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. And I have to say, Christian's not going to like this. Guardians is one of my favorite, absolute favorite Marvel things they do, movie wise. Absolutely. That's fair. Like totally it's fair. it's up there. Deadpool's up there. It's up there. I just the first Guardians, wonderful. Second Guardians was pretty solid. I, I not as good as the first one. The third one I actually really enjoyed. The music's always amazing. I really like the chemistry between, you know, Chris Pratt and Gamora and you know, Groot, Vin Diesel, and Bradley Cooper, and and uh, Batista. Like, I just enjoy their interaction, how they go, the the comedic they bring in different elements, as well as when they actually work as a team. They're pretty badass, and I I just mm-hmm. I really enjoy it. I do really enjoy that series, and I'm kind of sad, you know, with how it ended, knowing Guardians is done. But Spoiler, if you haven't seen, uh, pretty much now that Guardians is done, it says the legendary Star-Lord will return, which I'm assuming means Chris Pratt has signed on as Star-Lord to play what I'm thinking is a series, but I could be wrong. He could get his own movie. I don't know. I kind of imagine it'll be a Disney Plus series, though, with him doing something. I don't I don't know what Christian Probably. thinks on that or if he has any insight. A little bit. Our insight, not so much, but, but an opinion, sure, 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 sure. And the opinion that I have of that is I think that Guardian Guardians is fun to watch, man. I can't lie about that. It's fun. It's good it's good stuff. There's a reason like the James one, Gunn like got put over DC with with the success of Guardians, what he did with that, and I guess like his style. And then mm-hmm. uh Peacemaker is the other one, right? That he did. Yeah. yeah. And then he also did Su- like he has a class. certain I don't know signature kind of thing that he does in these movies, and it, it yeah. to me it, I enjoy it for the most part. Um, Guardians, I just I really do like Guardians, I do, and it's one I didn't like going in. I didn't know shit about them, and I was like, eh. But then I watched, it and I was like, damn, this movie's actually pretty good, and it's an awesome cast. Mm-hmm. I think that um, Guardians is good. Seeing Chris Pratt come back as Star Lord kind of makes sense. Like he. He's come out and said a couple, like a couple of times at this point, that it was really rough and he didn't want to do all these movies, but he didn't want to be broke. And I'm just like, dude, you weren't ever gonna be broke after the first Guardians came out and made money, and then you were in Guardians Two, then you had, um, you know, In Game and all that, so you were gonna be fine regardless. The thing is, working with James Gunn and having the same crew of people and being able to kind of goof around on set and do these things has been fun for him. Has has been fun for the entire crew. So of course he would come back and do more stuff. Like most actors, like uh, Chris Evans for an example. Chris Evans would come back to play Captain America if they paid him what he wanted. Like he wouldn't have a problem with it. He would absolutely do it. Um, but that's just it, though. They they can't pay a lot of these actors to come back and reprise these roles as these characters. So that's when we get them retiring from being whatever, and then you get a new version of the character, or you get a new character in general, blah blah blah. Like that's how that keeps happening. Notice. Most of the Avengers who started the Avengers movies, like they're done now, they're retired. They want to move on to different things. Which is isn't that why they do they... the phase, right? Because phase one been like the Downey Juniors, the Chris Evans, like all them, and now they're done. So now we're like, hey, here's your next group. In that kind yeah. of like part of the phase reason. I mean, it's it wasn't necessarily the way that they wanted things to be, but because of how contracts work and and all that, 
they have to keep redoing stuff and, and, and changing it up and paying more money and paying more money. And that's exactly what's going on with a lot of those actors who started the, you know, this, the, the MCU. So we're getting newer actors who don't cost nearly as much, who can do these things, who will sign on for, you know, two, three movies and renegotiate to sign on for three more movies, blah, blah, blah. Um, you see the same kind of thing happening to Tom Holland. Like Tom Holland doesn't really do his movies don't really do well outside of Marvel, outside of Sony. So it, it's it's harder for him to like ask for more, for, ask for more, to ask for more. But Spider Man always makes money, so he doesn't want to play Spider Man for the rest of his life, which I completely understand. Nobody want to play the same character forever, but he's obviously going to make this lap, this other Spider Man movie, and there are going to be some spinoff stuff they want to do, and I'm sure they'll renegotiate the contract and get him to do some shit because that's what these businesses do. But going back to Chris Pratt to making it simple, they'll probably make him a Disney Plus thing. Am I excited for it? No, um, just because I've had enough Chris Pratt doesn't mean I don't like him. I've just had enough. And he's also going to be Mario for like the foreseeable future. So we're going to be listening to him do his Mario thing for the next, I don't know, six to eight years, most likely. Um, and they'll keep doing spinoff shit of that. And then he'll have other little roles that he'll do pop in for those. They'll probably put him in the the new Mario game, he'll probably be a voice in the games at some point. Like it'll, you'll, we'll see it. We'll all see that stuff happen. Have they confirmed Mario soon, too? So. Oh, they haven't confirmed Mario too, but they don't need to confirm it because they made so much money. Like yeah. it's a no brainer. I mean, I'm fine with Mario. Too. Also, I, with, we've watched it a couple times with uh, since it it just released on like Peacock, I think, uh, yesterday or something. Mm-hmm. And since then, it's already we've watched it at least twice, maybe three times. Like, Baby Sin actually enjoys Mario, which is cool, and it's a good movie. Like, it's fun. So I'm definitely down for more Mario movies. I personally enjoyed it. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's just like, <clears throat> like I was saying, that's kind of how it is. So we're seeing we're seeing those things, and uh, I, I'm, I'm going to get tired of seeing Chris Pratt play this character, um, and I don't want that. I don't want it to get to that point, so I think that him bowing out gracefully now is fine and then coming back later on after we've had a break sure but uh, but yeah man I, I, obviously it's gonna happen i don't think it happened like right as marvel is trying to cut the fat from a lot of their movies and tv shows and slow down how many movies we get a year so i think that we're gonna start seeing them go back to like one movie a year one tv show a year like i think that that's about to happen like after this phase is it's kind of done and the writers strike cleans up and, and, and the actor strike cleans up. We'll start seeing those Marvel movies get announced again, but it's going to be a much smaller list. They're going to come out much uh, further apart. Uh, they're going to spend less money on each movie at a time so they don't lose as much money. They're going to not spend so much money on the show so they don't lose so much money. Because like shows like Secret Invasion, for example, it's not a bad show, but it's not a good show either. Like It's not getting the views that it needs to get. And then a lot of these Marvel shows... They don't give you fucking anything for like the first three four episodes and then try to dump a whole lot of shit in the, in the, yep. you know, penultimate episode. So that's what always happens. And people, people get sick of that shit. People don't like that. People don't like waiting week to week to watch a show that ends up, it ends up being nothing. And, um, Marvel and, and, and Kevin Feige and all these people, they're finally starting to see that people speak now with their wallets and then they will destroy you on the internet as well. So that's that's what's happening. Um, but yeah, but one one thing I wanted to touch on real quick before you get into the other stuff was uh, I may have brought this up last week and I'm not sure if I did. So I apologize if I'm repeating myself, but because we're running out of time, I want to say this really quickly. Um, the Flash bombed hard in the box office. It's on digital now and it's like the highest selling thing on digital uh, right now because people actually do want to watch the movie. They just I want to watch it. You see, yeah. First chance I get, I'm going to watch it like when, I, when I can, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I said this in the review, and I said this on the podcast before. I actually enjoyed the film. Like, I, I don't hop on the hate train. Uh, was it a perfect movie? No. Was the CGI bad? Yes. Was the movie fun? Yes. I enjoyed the movie. Uh, even though Ezra Miller is a shit human being, they fucking did their thing in this movie, and it worked for me. And I watched it, and I liked it. And uh, I'll buy that on, like, Blu-ray. 4k whatever and i'll add it to my collection because i like physical media but i'll definitely have that and watch it again for sure um 
But anyway, I just wanted to bring that up really quick. I thought it was really funny that I was reading articles about how much is selling now digital and then it'll be on physical here soon. And it's it's actually making money. Now it's not making the money it was supposed to make by any means, but it's just funny to see how people pick and choose to support things. And I, I like that. I think that's cool. People speak with their wallets. People speak with, with you know, aside from speaking on Twitter and shit, like people do speak with their wallets. Speaking, so speaking of wallets companies. and money. Mm-hmm. You know who has probably one of the the easiest gigs of all time? I say that and it could be way more difficult than than I'm than I know. Who's that? Who do you think? Vin that? Diesel as Groot. <laughs> this dude has been how many how many films is and he has a little spin-off too, the little short story things. How many mm-hmm. he's been in Three Guardians, a Thor Endgame? Mm-hmm. What, maybe two Avenger movies? Yeah, I, I agree with you. And all he has to that. say is, I am Groot. Like, and the, obviously they're going to, like, I guess he could change his pitch and they're going to do whatever they do with computer magic. But that's all dude has to say is, I am Groot. Except for the last one you hear, I love you guys, which I'm assuming he still said, I am Groot. And we're actually hearing what they hear for once instead of what we always hear. Mm-hmm. Because they make, like, speculation. Uh, You're just making that up kind of thing. But. That yeah. dude got paid millions, millions. Christian, mm-hmm. I would mm-hmm. you tell me to say I am Groot, I will show up and I will just go I am Groot. Like I will say it all day. You tell me how you want it. You pay me the money. Like that's that's all he had to do. I think I don't that's know. He exactly may have to do more. I don't know, but he just he has to say it a lot of different ways, and he's sitting in a booth and saying it a lot. But like it. If we're being honest, like it's not, it's not the hardest job in the world. It doesn't take no. long just to do you're that. You're telling me and if they're like Christian, chops. we're gonna give you. I, I don't. I'm not even gonna try to speculate how much they paid him, but we're gonna give you this amount of dollars to go sit in a booth for eight hours. I mean, I can't imagine it takes forever, but I'm sure they probably just went through and like all of his parts. He just had to. You need this inflection, or you need this tone, or you know. But mm-hmm. you just say, "I am Groot." It's gonna be very hard to remember your lines, but you have to say. I am Groot, and make, dude, I, props to him. That has got to be one of the nicest gigs ever. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I had to Absolutely. I had to say that. Because every time I watch him, I'm like, damn, Vin Diesel? Just, that bank account looks nice from being Groot, huh? Which, it already looked it nice does. from Fast and Furious, I'm sure, but. Yeah. I mean, nice. Yeah, I agree, man. I agree. Um, because we're Because we're running low on time, I wanted to. Throw in a couple things that I watched real quick, if that was cool with you. Yeah, let's dive into yours. I'm done with mine. Let's get into yours. What you got for me? If it's not... Uh, uh, I did finish... If it's not Dick Butt, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I, <laughs> I did finish Secret Invasion. I know I mentioned it earlier. Um, It was fine. That's all I can say. There was there was like a, a reveal, a big reveal in the show that I can't bring up because you haven't seen it yet. But everybody who's seen it or who's been online looking it up, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so that was cool. I suspected that as soon as we, it was episode two, I think. I was like, something ain't right with this character. Turned out to be true. And uh, I liked that. That was kind of cool. Um, there's some other things that happened in this show that I also don't really want to talk about that I thought were cool. The way that they kind of get the the scroll stuff together without it being the comic book character that it's supposed to be was clever, I think. It just wasn't... Um, it doesn't grab me like I wanted it to grab me. I like the main villain, but he did. He also didn't grab me the way that I thought that he could. Um, but he wasn't bad either. I didn't think he was a bad villain. I just thought that he needed a little more seasoning, if you will. Um, but they keep doing the Killmonger thing. Like a lot of villains now in Marvel take the, the Killmonger treatment where they have a really good cause for what they're doing and, and, and you want to get behind what they're doing. They're just going to the extreme. I think that Marvel found a niche with that, and they're they're going to keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. But eventually, you're not going to be able to rely on that, and people are going to get tired of seeing that type of villain. So it's time to change it up, um, is what I'll say. But uh, I did enjoy the show for what it was. I wish they gave Nick Fury more to do. He had speeches, but he didn't really have much to do with give speeches and limp around. So that was kind of annoying. Um, but but all in all, like if I had to rank the show one to ten, I give it like a six. Like it wasn't bad, but it wasn't good either. It was it was just it was fine. Um, Better than Miss Marvel. That I started watching. 
it's absolutely better than Miss Marvel. I will okay. say better than She Hulk. Um, she yes, it was. She Hulk wow. was fun because it was so ridiculous, but it was better in my opinion because I like the stakes in this. Movie. Okay, She Hulk was fun. It like was better than I thought it'd be. Okay. She-Hulk gotcha. didn't have, like, a villain, per se. No. It's just everybody in She-Hulk that wasn't She-Hulk or her group of friends yeah. was garbage. Literally every dude in that show sucked except for uh, the main, like, their best friend. I can't remember his name right now, Puck or something. Yeah, he was cool. I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I got you. Yeah, yeah but, like, but like most, of the, most of the people in that show sucked, and they were all villains. So it... it, it you were just watching She Hulk complain about how her life sucks, and then watching it as her life sucked as well until it didn't. You know what I mean? So that kind of happened. But in this show, it's not Nick Fury complaining; it's him trying to get some shit done and fix some problems while doing while doing it his way, which isn't always the best way. And, and I like that per se. Plus, Samuel Jackson's just a better actor than a lot of the people that we just mentioned. Like Tatiana Maslany, like I like her as an actor a lot, but the script wasn't tight enough for her to do anything with. Samuel Jackson's been doing it longer. So even if his script isn't as tight, he still puts his own Sam Jackson thing on it and it feels better, makes it easier to watch. So I did have a lot of fun with that. Um, and some of the characters that they introduced in this are interesting and I would I want to see them do other things. But She-Hulk, you kind of know where that's gonna go. And I'm not like the most excited person to see where what they're going to do with it next. I love She-Hulk as a character. I love her in the comics. Her in the show is very different, obviously. So we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, I did like it better than She-Hulk. Uh, a new show that I started watching recently is called Snowfall. It's on Hulu. It's been getting hella reviews. All I've heard great. nothing but good things about, about that show. It. Yeah, I see why. It's great. It's kind of like... I'm getting similar feelings to the show that I got from watching Breaking Bad. And the reason why is because the subject matter is very similar. You get a character who's morally good, and then you put them in a great situation because they need money because of whatever is happening to them or to family members. And then their morality starts to go from good to gray to darker gray. So, so I am the danger. Yeah. So, so it, it, it's fun. It is fun to watch that. And it's a, it's a, it's a black perspective, right? So it's the eighties, black characters you kind of know how that goes with how racism was especially back then how prevalent it was uh so it's fun to see that kind of thing and then it revolves on drugs and how it affects the community and blah 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 so like i I, i'm enjoying it so far i'm not super far in it i think i'm like six five six episodes in it's really good it's good to see those characters converge as well i'm enjoying that a lot 100 percent recommend snowfall it's a fantastic show i wish i liked it hulu more than i like it because i would watch it more and i wish that i had the money to just upgrade my hulu service to be the one that doesn't have ads because the fucking ads on hulu are killing me bro yeah they're killing me they're annoying um yeah for sure aside from that of warrior i watched the latest episode at the time of this recording which is episode seven i'm pretty sure episode eight actually dropped today um no yesterday but I haven't watched it, um, so I'll, I'll watch it, you know, soon after we record, I'm sure. But Warrior has been great. I love the show. I've always liked the show. I've always hyped it up. It's still good. This is probably the best season we had. I really like what's going on. I can't wait to see how tensions are going to rise even more, how things are going to get sewn up in here. I hope that this isn't the last season. I hope that it continue it. I hope we get season four. I fucking love Warrior. I can hype it up all day. If you haven't seen it and you're listening to this or watching this, please do yourself a favor. Hop on Max. Watch it. It's fantastic. Um, and Sin, that goes double for you. you got to watch it. 100% have to watch it. Um, but the, the big thing I want to talk about, I watched a movie last week that I really fucking enjoyed on Netflix, and it's called They Clone Tyrone. And... <sighs> That movie was way better than I thought it was going to be. It was going to be like a six out of 10, had some funny moments and lasted a little too long. Uh, and I saw everything I needed to see in the trailer. I was fucking wrong. I enjoyed the shit out of this movie. Jamie Foxx brought it. Um, jo uh, uh, John Boyega always fucking brings it. I loved him since I saw him in the saw him in was a movie called Attack, which is also fantastic. And it, look it up. 
10 that goes double for you. But they cloned Tyrone. I gave it a 10 out of 10 at first, and I, I've, like, calmed down a bit, and I'm giving it a 9. They cloned Tyrone is a 9 out of 10. It's fantastic. I'll make a review on it, post it on TikTok here soon. But, y'all, watch the trailer so you know what you're getting into, and then watch the movie. Because it's like a black exploitation type movie. Uh, we don't hear it necessarily. It feels like it's in the 80s, but it also feels like it's not in the 80s. Like, it's crazy. Like, I, I don't want to ruin too much. I'll just say, like, the cars and the flip phones don't match up to the time period it feels like it's in. But they talk about movies from, like, today, uh, modern times. It's really, really funny. I really, really, really like this movie. It is two hours long. So if you're not a big fan of long movies, like, just have that mindset that you're going to be sitting there for two hours. It's 100% worth the two hours. One of the best things I've seen in a long time. I've watched two things on Netflix this year that I absolutely loved. One of them I talked about last podcast is called Bloodhounds. Fantastic show. The second one is this, they clone Tyrone. And I'm absolutely going to watch this again. Um, it's something that I'm going to watch with uh, friends, family. I'm going to show it to them, make sure they watch it. Like I can't fucking wait. So, they call Tyrone. I watched it. So good. Nine out of 10. Please watch it if you have it. It's two hours, but it's worth it. And I hope that we get more movies like this, especially from the director that we got. So what, uh, what movie did you say you saw dude from you cut out? You've been a fan of him since uh, then. attack the attack, the block, attack, the block, attack, the block, attack. the block. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's fantastic. It's That's fantastic when you said I, you, I doubles down for me to watch. Yeah, it's a science fiction kind of horror e film, and you should okay. absolutely watch it. Okay. But it's mostly comedy, though. I will say, uh, one of the characters is um, uh, 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 I can't remember his name. Now. It's not Sean from Shaun of the Dead, but the guy that plays Ed in Shaun of the Dead, his best friend. Oh yeah, I know um, you're about the the heavier set guy. Yeah, he's he's I he's in it. Like I know in the movie. exactly what you're talking about. I see him. I can't think of his name either. Nick 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 Frost. Nick Frost. Yeah. Yeah, but he's in it. It's a good. It's really good. It's really. Fun. It, it, it revolves around uh, a bunch of hoodlum kids. It's hoodlum. Who the fuck am I? It revolves around a bunch of like kids that, are, that you know robbing people and, and trying to get into the drug trade essentially. Hoodlum. Um, yeah. Hoodlum. hoodlum? Yeah. I what'd, said you, hoodlums, what'd you just like, say? Like a, like a hoodlums. Hoodlum. Hoodlums. Hoodlum. You're a bunch of hoodlums. Get off my yard, you hoodlums. Ex exactly. I don't know what happened to me there, but. Like I said, it, it revolves around them. They're robbing a lady. They're stealing stuff from her. She's on her way home from work. And while that's happening, uh, an invasion of sorts takes place. So that that's the best I can tell you without ruining the entire story. But it's absolutely worth it. I saw it in college, and it's great. But so, like I said, they cloned Tyrone. Quick synopsis. Uh, synopsis. Christian said, listeners, watch They Clone Tyrone. Watch Attack the Block. Mm -hmm. Watch Warrior. Absolutely. 100%. Or and snowfall. you suck. And snowfall, yeah. Or you suck, yeah. pretty much. It's just been a week of recommendations. And with that said, uh, I do have um, another question to ask on our next segment. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let you take it from here. I have seen none of those, so I got stuff to watch. Also, I had an epiphany, and you're going to yell at me. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to yell at me? Because you already yelled at me about Puppet Master. So that's a, that's a goal this spooky season. Is Puppet Master. I'm making an effort to watch it. Um, I don't know that I've seen Event Horizon. Wow, really? Yeah, I don't. If I have, I'm not remembering it well enough to know. Because whenever I'm trying to, like, you know when you think of, like, a movie title? Like, if you think Halloween, like, scenes pop up and, like, that's your, your memory of, you're like, oh, yeah, I've watched that. You know what I'm talking about? Like, that whatever. Yeah, I know what you mean. I, whenever I'm thinking that, my brain is immediately going to sunshine, and I 100% know that's not it. But that's what my brain is going. So I'm like, what the hell is Event Horizon? Like, I cannot, in the corridors of my brain, remember. So I don't know that I've seen it. I may, ha I may watch and be like, oh, it's this movie. But, yeah. I had that that's epiphany. Fair. That's fair. So... Okay, but that's enough of that. I'm ready for spooky season. I'm already fighting the urge to not start watching stuff every day. It's really bad. But 
that is it for our uh, main topics. And it's time, ladies and gentlemen, that we pass the whiskey. That's right. Get your whiskey. As we go into our last call segment. And Christian has a question for us today. I do. I was I was actually listening to another podcast uh, the other day that I really liked called uh, The Cherry Picker. And they were talking about uh, one of the Halloween films I actually really liked. And they were talking about it without the nostalgia glasses, uh, which is Halloween H2O. Okay. And I wanted to ask you, Sin, I want to hear your best raw thoughts about Halloween H2O and the plot of the film, not necessarily like all the masks, because everybody who's a God, fan of that movie, we're not talking about the, the masks, because we'll go on it, that'll be, we'll get derailed. Yeah, which I do want to ask you about. Oh, Why? But now, I just want to know, I, I, the question is, what are your honest, raw, non-nostalgia thoughts about Halloween H2O and the plot? And it's a two-parter. The second part of that question is, if you were able to rewrite that movie to change things around, what would you change? Hmm. Okay. Um, I actually enjoy H2O. I do. I think out of the, the franchise, H2O, I feel like I ranked it pretty high when we ranked it. Maybe not like, hmm. maybe not top five. It might have been. I don't know. Um, I think it's a good premise. I think it brings everything back. Um, full circle when you think about it and the fact that you bring Lori back in the fray for the first one since two, right? Because mm-hmm. she wasn't mm-hmm. in four and five. Um, so you bring her back in the fold. It's 20 years later. Michael's back after her. You kind of see the, the post effects of what happened, like what she's been dealing with with the paranoia and stuff like that. Um, yeah. I like the fact that she semi has a life and she's trying to move forward and she has a son and stuff like that. Um, all in all, I do enjoy it. I do like it. There are things obviously I don't like, but I think the story's not bad. Things I would change. Um, okay. So quick, quick question before I give you. So is there, are we going to have resurrection after H2O? If I change stuff. Oh, you're changing it. So you get to tell me. Okay. Um, if you're rewriting it, that means you get to change the ending in general. So if you want to change the ending and make it finite, you get to do that. I would, I would potentially, I would scrap the ending of H2O. I would, well, well, would you replace I would get it rid of the whole you, decapitation, you, all that, the, the moment of almost weakness. Cause although we find out later, it's not Michael, but the moment of weakness for Michael's like reaching out to his sister, all that. Um, I would almost, I would almost be okay with essentially letting Lori die in H2O. Um, but you got to explain how you would do that though. Um, cause, cause what would you have an, un- an idea of how you would do that? Or so our, just okay. How you want to First and foremost, is the studio going to greenlit a second movie or are we done? Are we rapping or are we greenlitting? Cause that's, that's the thing you got to think the, I don't remember how far out resurrection was from H2O. Do you? It was it was pretty soon after. It was pretty soon after. It was like so they probably knew there was H2O another movie out. in the works. Like there would be another one. They did. They okay. Did. So do I have that same luxury? Do I know there's another movie or not? I think th- so. I, I let me rephrase how I asked the question. So it make, makes more sense because you are rewriting it. You get say on how that movie ends. I'm controlling if there's another movie or not. If in other words. And if there is another one, you're a part of that. So, like, okay. if the movie ends on a cliffhanger, then sure, there'll be another one. That doesn't mean it's going to be Resurrection because you're changing it. So, how would you change that? Resurrection. So you were going to write trash. Halloweenish. Just saying. Yeah. Um, it is. It is. It's hot fucking garbage. But you get to tell me. So we're we're point, scrapping that right now. Resurrection's not a thing. If I'm I'm in control, we're not we're not doing that route. We're mm-hmm. not going down that path. Um. Okay. okay. I kind of honestly, I kind of like the idea of wrapping Lori up because you probably know ahead of time you're not getting Jamie in, in 
because I feel like it's almost one offs at times with her. Like after the first two, yeah. like this trilogy is an exception. But at that time, she was not really one. trying to do it. Like, so I kind of like the idea of wrapping up Lori. So what you could do is, mm-hmm. and I don't have a good ending off the top of my head, but have some way where they kind of go out together and maybe like a cool little like poetic, not poetic, but you know what I'm saying? Like they go out together or she thinks they go out together, but obviously Michael survives. And then if you do continue or we do go to the next one, then you can bring Josh Hartnett back to kind of carry that, that lineage. And you could bring some of that to, to go with the story that way as chasing his nephew, you know, like the whole family tie still is precedent, but I think she should go out there because I really did not like her dying in the first few minutes of Resurrection. I was like, "That's well, stupid." You got to remember too, though, like because you're doing res, you're doing H two O. There is no Resurrection. I know. So I'm just saying I didn't like that, so I wouldn't phone. bring her back for another one. Just uh, I do like killing a main character early. I think that is always a good shock value to be like, "Oh, I know this name. It's a good name." Murdered. I do enjoy that when done right. But I don't. I wouldn't that, do that. I think I would just wrap her up because it's twenty years later. It's kind of neat to wrap it up twenty years after the fact. So I think I would wrap it with her saga at least, and then you could leave it open with something with Hartnett. You know. Okay. I think. And the mask is what I would shoes. do. Spiky hair, damn in sync mask is boo boo shoes. I don't care. It may not be the worst mask of all time, but damn, it's up there. I hate the spiky hair. Hate it. So mask aside, I think what I would do, and this isn't full on my idea. I heard some of this on the cherry picker podcast. That's a that's a lot to try to process ask. and come up with right now. Like thinking of it, like how I would completely change history as far as Halloween goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I said, not fully my idea. I'm just kind of adapting what I heard and changing it around to suit my needs. But if I were going to do H two O, because I grew up watching the other Halloweens as well. What I would do is have Lori come back kind of the same way. Still has problems. Still has. However, I like that because I think she's not she, going to be. She's a she's a kid essentially. Like she's 16, 17 when Halloween happens. She's going to have some kind of trauma for sure. Yeah, she, yeah she's still, still in high school. So, but that's this is just it though. For me, I would have her. She would still be. Whatever her Sharon Tate or whatever I forget her name in the, in the movie right now. She would still be uh, headmistress of this school. Still have John. Still have drinking problems and, and can't sleep. All this stuff. Still thinking about Michael. But the reason why she's having so many issues isn't uh, of what happened to her in 1978. It would be because she also had Jamie and gave Jamie up. Right. So. Oh, she knows that Jamie's dead at this point, and that's what's fucking her up. And she knows that she's dead because of Michael. So that's why she's in like this depressive, you know, episode. That's why she can't sleep. That's why she can't eat. Like all out and drinking and all this stuff. So she's just a functional out point. And uh I would have it to where she hadn't talked to John about it at all. So John doesn't know what's going on. So it's new for him. And have that come out in this movie. So her tell what's really going on. Tell him that he had a sister. Tell him that uh, that you know Jamie died because his uncle Michael killed her. Blah blah blah. All that stuff. I would still set up in there, and also have it to where Lori name drops Doctor Loomis in some way. Like you know, I spoke to to Loomis, and he told me that he was going to do everything in his power to take care of her and make sure that she didn't have to go through the same shit I went through. But that didn't happen because of what you know the thorn shit that we saw. Then. Uh, Michael, I wouldn't have a couple, obviously some of the scenes would be different, but I would have it to where Michael does finally find Lori. The way that he finds her with Nurse Miriam and stuff, I would change that up a little bit to make it make more sense. I don't have that directly in my brain at the moment, but him just showing up to her house and her having those files is a little easy. Uh, and, you know, it, we you wouldn't think that Michael's that smart. And also, why would she have those files from Dr. Loomis anyway? So I would kind of change that up to make it make sense. But um, the scene where he doesn't kill that the, the mother daughter in the bathroom, I would either have him kill them or just take that out completely um, to add to the kill count. 
I would have it to where Michael gets to the school and takes out way more people in the school. They could still have a field trip or whatever to get some of the people out of there so he doesn't have to go through the entire school. But I would absolutely have it Can to where more people get taken out because it's not enough. Like the entire boarding school thing or private school or whatever the hell it was? Yeah. Yeah, Jesus. I would definitely take out way more teachers, take out way more students. I would have it to where, you know, you, you, so many things could happen in that in that mindset, in that facility. And it's dark and it's like a perfect atmosphere for that kind of thing. Um, and I would have it to where what happens for me, like one of two things, because in my brain, that's going to be the last one, right? There's not going to be any more. So what I would do is have Lori lose John as well. And then that's when she finally snaps and breaks and decides that it's going to be her, Michael. Michael's got to go. She gets her so axe. you want to take everybody out. The- you want to completely wrap it up. No John, no Lori. Like, we're all done. Like, they're, yeah. that yeah, lineage and, is gone. But, but, but that's – I was going to say this, too. John doesn't necessarily have to die, but Lori thinks that he is gone, right? So he gets stabbed in the back, whatever. Something happens to him, yeah. and he's, like, injured, my dude. So we're like, oh, shit, John's fucking gone. But, you know, it's a movie, so we don't see the body. You don't see blood coming out of his mouth. He's sitting there with a dead-eyed stare. He's not dead yet. So something happens to him. Lori snaps. She goes after Michael. They have a climactic battle. But I don't want to see her crawling under tables and shit. I want to see them fucking fighting more so like we saw in like ends, I guess. Um, But they go for that fight. All the shit happens. Michael's almost going to get away because the paramedics show up. All this other shit happens. You know, John gets help, whatever. She steals the car still, uh, the ambulance, and then crashes. We can have all of that the same. And we still get that head chop, and Michael's legitimately dead. And if we wanted to do more movies later on down the line, then they would focus around John. John would probably just take the mantle of being oh, we're kind of the uh, same. Michael in this movie. Yeah, because I mean, if we're gonna do more, Michael's dead. We have to find out a new person to kind of assume that that personality. But he's not Michael necessarily. He's his, he's his own thing. Uh, and and it's because of the trauma that he endured with he all that stuff. He becomes found out. Man. Yeah, he, he found out he had you a could, sister who got killed by his the, the mask crazy. slightly. Like you could take the iconic mask and just he has his own little twist to it. Just even a little bit, yeah. some subtle little thing to make it just a little different. He could make it shit. Like who knows? Yeah. Um. But like I said, if Not if bad. we don't do that, if we didn't do that, that'd be the. Last. I would do something to that effect. That way, you still get Jamie in it. Uh, because I'd like Jamie as a character. Uh, you still get John because he actually wasn't a bad character. I enjoyed him. Lori still goes. To- Jamie's acting thing for sure. Michael's still in there. Obviously, he doesn't have that stupid ass mask that he has in that movie. He's a little scarier. And we have him moving like Michael, not like a fucking. I think in the commentary for that movie, they said that they wanted him to move like a panther or some bullshit. Jesus Christ. Uh-oh. He talk what he moves like, excuse me. But um I would have that happen again. And that's what I would do for that movie. That I would I would do that that kind of thing. And it would be the K and B mask probably for me. Uh because that was like the closest that we were gonna get at that point. But that's that's how I would switch it up. Okay. It's crazy that we were kind of similar on that, surprisingly. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's so do you I like H2O though. I do. I do like H2O. I like it a lot. There's it has problems. Trash. It has problems oh, yeah, for, sure. for sure. It's not perfect. The music from the movie is literally ripped from Scream. So it's not like perfect. the soundtrack is, is weird. But well, yeah, I still enjoy the movie and nostalgia right. glasses make it even better for me. Oh yeah, for sure. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well that's gonna do it for this episode. And if you'd like your question to be featured on the podcast, join the Gilded Server Gilded.gg slash Sinister Pack in the application put from the pod, and there's a whole section dedicated to the last call question where you can get your question featured on the episode, or you can hit us up on social media. At Sippin' with Sin, S I P P I N with Sin on Twitter, Instagram, Threads, TikTok, and Facebook. Hit us up there with the last call question. We'd love to hear from you and love to get that question featured on an episode as we get closer and closer to spooky season. Also, don't forget to submit those sinister tales so we can get that segment back up and rolling. You can do that on the Gilded server or you can uh, hit us up on the socials as well with it. We'd love to talk about things that go bump at night, either personal stories or things you found on the internet or stuff like that. As long as it's not a movie premise, because then we'll just be like, what are you doing? Why are you sending us this? Um, but we love to have that as spooky season comes up and around soon, 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 soon. Uh, be sure to follow those socials. New episode every Wednesday, 8 a.m. Central Time on all audio platforms, Spotify, Anchor, 
Overcast, Google, Apple, all that stuff. Yeah, all of it. 8 a.m. every Wednesday, Central Time. Rate it five stars. Share it with a friend. Subscribe, follow, all that stuff. To show it love, keep showing it love. It helps us a ton. It moves us up the list. Keep spreading the word of it. We love you guys spreading the word and helping it grow. We've been doing this. We're rapidly approaching 100 episodes, so we really appreciate you all. And don't forget, if you like to watch the live video version over on my personal YouTube, youtube.com slash I am Sinister, you can watch it there every Wednesday at 8 a.m. Central Time as well. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe because your boy is pushing towards some nice goals over there on YouTube. So let's uh, let's smash those goals, okay? All right. You can find me on my personal socials, Twitter, Instagram, and threads. I, I am Sinister TV. You can also find me on TikTok.com slash I am Sinister TV or whatever it is. TikTok, I am Sinister TV. There you go. You can find me there. And then uh, you can find me streaming on kick.com slash I am sinister over at twitch.tv slash I am sinister TV. And you can find me on facebook.com slash I am sinister TV. That's where you can find me. Hit me up. Say hello. I'd love to hear from you and come hang out for the stream or whatever. Or just talk to me about the pod. Whatever you want to do. Okay. All right. Where can the lovely folks find you, Christian? You guys on Instagram at uh, Venon Inc. All one word. You guys can also find me on TikTok at my name, Christian Vinson. Those are the two places you can find me the most active right now. You can also find me on my own horror podcast at uh, Horrorverse Pod. That's on all the socials. Uh, I'm not as active at the moment, but I'm still active, and you'll see me over there posting, especially about Garth Brooks. But that's where you guys can oh find me. Uh, aside from that, that's it. Come say hi. Say what's up. That's right. It's where you can find us. Go say hello. We would appreciate it. And, folks, be sure if you go pick up G Fuel, use your boy's code, code Sinister. Get yourself some G Fuel. Stay uh, stay focused, you know? Get that energy. I would appreciate it. And then if you do, tag us in it. Say, hey, Sin, I used your code, you dingus. There you go. But you don't have to go home, ladies and gentlemen. That's it for this week. You can go wherever you want, but you got to get the hell up out of here. It's time for Christian to shut the doors, lock it down until next week. Guys, thank you so much for joining us on one other episode of Sipping with Sin. Be sure to leave a five-star review, smash that like button, hit us up in the comments, hit us up on all the socials. Before you leave, guys, I'm going to leave you with three words. Everybody who's been here with us knows those three words very well. If you don't know those words, listen carefully because they may save your life. Those three words are as follows. Don't get gutted. See you guys next week. <laughs>